Knowledge, as has been said, lying in the perception of the agreement or disagreement of any of our ideas, it follows from hence that, first, it extends no further than we have ideas. First, we can have knowledge no further than we have ideas. Two, secondly, it extends no further than we can perceive their agreement or disagreement. Secondly, that we can have no knowledge further than we can have perception of that agreement or disagreement, which perception being, one, either by intuition, or the immediate comparing any two ideas, or two, by reason, examining the agreement or disagreement of two ideas by the intervention of some others, or three, by sensation, perceiving the existence of particular things. Hence, it also follows, three, thirdly, intuitive knowledge extends itself not to all the relation of all our ideas. Thirdly, that we cannot have an intuitive knowledge that shall extend itself to all our ideas and all that we would know about them, because we cannot examine and perceive all the relations they have one to another by juxtaposition or an immediate comparison one with another. Until the 10th of January, the observations were chiefly directed to the stars in the southern signs, in which, without the aid of the hydro-oxygen reflectors, a countless number of new stars and nebulae were discovered. But we shall defer our correspondence account of these to future pages, for the purpose of no longer withholding from our readers the more generally and highly interesting discoveries which were made in the lunar world. And for this purpose, too, we shall defer Dr. Grant's elaborate mathematical details of the corrections which Sir John Herschel has made in the best tables of the moon's tropical, sidercal, and synodic revolutions, and of those phenomena of syzygies on which a great part of the established lunar theory depends. Thus, having the ideas of an obtuse and an acute angle triangle, both drawn from equal bases and between parallels, I can, by intuitive knowledge, perceive the one not to be the other, but cannot that way know whether they be equal or no, because their agreement or disagreement in equality can never be perceived by an immediate comparing them. The difference of figure makes their parts incapable of an exact immediate application, and therefore there is need of some intervening qualities to measure them by, which is demonstration or rational knowledge. It was about half past nine o'clock on the night of the 10th, the moon having then advanced within four days of her mean libration, that the astronomer adjusted his instruments for the inspection of her eastern limb. The whole immense power of his telescope was applied, and to its focal image about one half of the power of his microscope. On removing the screen of the latter, the field of view was covered throughout its entire area with a beautifully distinct and even vivid representation of basaltic rock. Its color was a greenish brown, and the width of the columns, as defined by their interstices on the canvas, was invariably 28 inches. No fracture whatever appeared in the mass first presented, but in a few seconds a shelving pile appeared of five or six columns width, which showed their figure to be hexagonal, and their articulations similar to those of the basaltic formation at Staffa. This precipitous shelf was profusely covered with a dark red flower, precisely similar, says Dr. Grant, to the papaver rias, or rose poppy, of our sublunary cornfields. And this was the first organic production of nature in a foreign world ever revealed to the eyes of men. Fourthly, it follows also from what is above observed that our rational knowledge cannot reach to the whole extent of our ideas, because between two different ideas we would examine, we cannot always find such mediums as we can connect to one another with an intuitive knowledge in all the parts of the deduction. And wherever that fails, we come short of knowledge and demonstration. The rapidity of the moon's ascension or rather of the Earth's diurnal rotation, being nearly equal to 500 yards in a second, would have effectually prevented the inspection or even the discovery of objects so minute as these, but for the admirable mechanism which constantly regulates, under the guidance of the sextant, 
the required altitude of the lens. But its operation was found to be so consummately perfect that the observers could detain the object upon the field of view for any period they might desire. The specimen of lunar vegetation, however, which they had already seen, had decided a question of too exciting an interest to induce them to retard its exit. It had demonstrated that the moon has an atmosphere constituted similarly to our own and capable of sustaining organized and therefore most probably animal life. Fifthly, sensitive knowledge reaching no further than the existence of things actually present to our senses is yet much narrower than either of the former. The basaltic rocks continued to pass over the inclined canvas plane through three successive diameters when a verdant declivity of great beauty appeared, which occupied two more. This was preceded by another mass of nearly the former height, at the base of which they were at length delighted to perceive that novelty, a lunar forest. Sixthly, our knowledge therefore narrower than our ideas. Sixthly, from all which it is evident that the extent of our knowledge comes not only short of the reality of things, but even of the extent of our own ideas. Though our knowledge be limited to our ideas and cannot exceed them either in extent or perfection, and though these be very narrow bounds in respect of the extent of all being, and far short of what we may justly imagine to be in some even created understandings, not tied down to the dull and narrow information that is to be received from some few and not very acute ways of perception, such as are our senses, yet it would be well with us if our knowledge were but as large as our ideas, and there were not many doubts and inquiries concerning the ideas we have, whereof we are not, nor, I believe, ever shall be in this world resolved. The trees, says Dr. Grant, for a period of ten minutes were of one unvaried kind, and unlike any I have seen, except the largest kind of yews in the English churchyards, which they in some respects resemble. These were followed by a level green plain, which, as measured by the painted circle on our canvas of 49 feet, must have been more than a half a mile in breadth, and then appeared as fine a forest of firs, unequivocal firs, as I have ever seen cherished in the bosom of my native mountains. Nevertheless, I do not question but that human knowledge under the present circumstances of our beings and constitutions may be carried much further than it has hitherto been, if men would sincerely and with freedom of mind employ all that industry and labor of thought in improving the means of discovering truth, which they do for the coloring or support of falsehood, to maintain a system, interest, or party they are once engaged in. But yet, after all, I think I may, without injury to human perfection, be confident that our knowledge would never reach to all we might desire to know concerning those ideas we have, nor be able to surmount all the difficulties and resolve all the questions that might arise concerning any of them. Wearied with the long continuance of these, we greatly reduced the magnifying power of the microscope without eclipsing either of the reflectors, and immediately perceived that we had been insensibly descending, as it were, a mountainous district of a highly diversified and romantic character, and that we were on the verge of a lake or inland sea. But of what relative locality or extent we were yet too greatly magnified to determine. On introducing the feeblest achromatic lens we possessed, we found that the water, whose boundary we had just discovered, answered in general outline to the Mare Nubium of Ricoli, by which we detected that, instead of commencing, as we supposed, on the eastern longitude of the planet, some delay in the elevation of the great lens had thrown us nearly upon the axis of her equator.